Hi Floss Tube, I'm Annie and I'm the Proper Stitcher and welcome to episode number 32. If you are new to my channel, welcome. And if you're returning, thank you so much for your continued support. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to my channel and ring the bell so you get notifications when I upload new videos. I usually record on Thursdays, upload new videos on Thursday evening, but once a month, I do have a special edition episode that I do on the 25th, which is a Quaker Christmas update. And I filmed one on Monday on the 25th. So check out episode number 31 for that. Um, I also give a quick little Quaker sampler history in those videos as well. So go and check out episode number 31. So in this video today, I'm going to do a Christmas whip parade. I'm also going to share two other whips that I'm working on that are non-holiday or non-Christmas. And I'm gonna show you some previous finishes, some haul, giveaways from last week and this week, and um, whatever else pops into my mind. <laughs> so let's get started. Grab a pen and paper, uh, because you'll probably wanna take notes on the giveaways. I'm gonna sprinkle them throughout the video like I do sometimes. Um, I'm also going to share with you the whip, so you may want to write down some of the patterns that I'm going to share with you today. So let me start with showing you some previous finishes. Um, I had I started pulling out some Christmas from my storage room, and not that I've started decorating for Christmas. I usually will start decorating the first week of, De of November for Christmas. Um, it takes me a day or so to get all of my Halloween and, and fall decorations down. And then I spend the first week of November organizing and uh, all of my Christmas decorations and figuring out what's going where, if anything's changing. So I thought today, for today's video, I would try to get my hands on some of my Christmas ornaments to share with you since I'm doing a Christmas whip parade. So first thing I want to show you are two little um, Christmas ornaments that I found in a vintage store or an antique store. Um, and these are dated 1984. Not sure who stitched it or what it is or what they stitched it on, but they're two little mice. This one is so cute. He is standing or she is standing at the um, a fireplace with some stockings. And then this one is on a little sled and or a sleigh sled or sleigh and it's so cute i just think these are adorable and i am going and i just got them this year sometime this year so i'm going to put these on my um tree this this year super cute and then i want to show you some of my pieces that i stitched from the prairie schooler button up series so i have this booklet actually in my whip parade to show you today but i pulled out three of the ornaments i've already stitched so here's one from the book and I finished these about two years ago and they are on a sticky board uh, double mounted and I did use um, interfacing behind this and some um, batting quilting batting to give it a little bit more poofiness but this one does have a little charm I'm trying not to and I realized I didn't put the charm down far enough but that's a little snow hat cute and I used blue ribbon for the hanger on this one. Now on these um, Prairie, uh, Prairie Schooler Button Up series, I added an extra border around it. This does not have a border like this. I added the red and the white border around this one. And on this one, I added a green border around it and I put a jingle bell at the top of this one. I just love this series. I'll share with you the book number that it is in. It, this has been reprinted. For the longest time, it was out of stock and out of print. So they have reprinted it. And here is the third one that I've stitched. And this one has the little dog in the tree. And I did do the border on this one. This is one that I can see where I cut the fabric too short. And you can see right here where it's starting to poke out a little bit. So I might try to fix that just to tighten it up a little bit, but I don't wanna rip too much of it apart. So we'll see how I can figure that out. Um, this is, I have come a long way with my finishing since I made these. I can see that my corners are not that great. It's a little, little messy on the back, but I still love these. So these are my three button up previous finished ornaments that I am excited that I found these because I want to 
do more from that booklet. So I'll show that to you in just a few minutes. So these are some of my previous finishes. So let me get those out of the way, give us a little bit more room. Let's go into um, my whips that are non-Christmas related. As you know, I stitch Tomato Tuesdays. And um, this week, I decided to start a new Tomato Tuesday start. I had to put the, I'm laughing because I found an old Christmas tree needle in one of those ornaments. <laughs> um, but this week I decided to put the um, Tiny Modernist, um, the Halloween um, themed Tomato Tuesday piece aside. And, and I will pull that back out next year because I decided that it was not going to be finished in time for this Halloween. And I wanted to just go ahead and move on to another Tomato Tuesday piece. So, I started this week the Queen of the Needle by Brenda Gervais, and I it has everything I love. It has tomatoes, and it has blue. So, I started this piece this week, and I really, and it has a little puppy in it, a little dog. It looks like my scout. So, let me show you. I have this piece of scrap linen that I got from the Finishing Touch, and it is pearled barley, 32 count pearled barley. So here is my start on Tuesday and I really am going to enjoy this. I, it's going to be a good size. I, I already know I'm wanting to frame this piece. It is so pretty and I love this linen. It's super soft but it is ba pearled barley 32 count. So let me show you again. So this is going to be a lot of fun. I am using all of the called for floss. Um, the blue of her dress is Jaybird, Weeks Dye Works, Jaybird. So here are those colors. Really, really pretty. And the red is Chili Pepper. Chili Pepper makes a great tomato red. It is so pretty. Um, and it's going to look great when this is done. But again, Brenda Gervais, Queen of the Needle. And I am keeping it in my new bag from Creative Carol. The, that she sent us last week, and someone won this one for this week. So I will get to that in just a minute. The other non-Christmas whip that I wanted to share with you today is from um, my floral motif sampler, The Scarlet House. I am doing this stitch along with Yoke um, on uh, Instagram. I will put her Instagram on below. I'll also put the hashtag. It is floral motif with Yoke and Annie, um, and it's a stitch along. You can start anytime you want, and you can stitch it however you want. But I am stitching mine on 40 count Picture This Plus Mallow Linen, and it you can see it has a little bit of a yellow tint to it, quite a bit of a yellow tint to it. Um, and this is what I added since I saw you last week. I have not done much. I started this little flower down here. But I am using all of the called for uh, Gentle Arts thread. And they're beautiful. This is going to be so much fun. This is, I saw Brenda in the Serial Starter. Brenda from Serial, Brenda in the Serial Starter. She stitched this over the summer and that, and I just loved it. And she had it framed and it's just absolutely beautiful. So if you would like to join us, please join us anytime you'd like and use the hashtag so we can see how everyone's doing, tag, tag us in it so I can also see your progress. Um, but it is a beautiful, beautiful chart. So let me give you um, a little, little hint of what's gonna happen. So I'm going to go over a few giveaways right now. I'm gonna do three giveaways for this week's video. And then we're gonna go over some of my whips and then we're gonna do some of the um, giveaways. So let's start with giveaways one, two, and three. So this week, some, some weeks I stand up and some weeks I sit down. I haven't figured out which I prefer. This week I've decided to sit down. I don't know why. Maybe because I thought this might be a little longer of a video. All right, so number one is going to be, and most of these, well, I think all of these came from a viewer, from more than one viewer. 
This is a full set of the Country Cottage Needleworks Gingerbread Village. This is number one. And there are eight patterns in this one set. I didn't want to break it up in the event that you already, you know, somebody needed all of them. I just thought it would be easier to keep them all together. So this is number one, Country Cottage Needleworks Gingerbread Village. I'm gonna keep the, the tag on it too. Number two is Bent Creek Waiting for Santa. And that's a little snowman holding a stocking. So that's Bent Creek. Number three is a Heinzit, and this one has two charms. It's called Charmed Snacked Stacked. Charmed Stacked Snowman. So those are the first three giveaways for this video. So let's move on to the next. All right, let's start with our um, whips. So I have quite a bit. I'm going to try to go through them pretty fast, but if you are new to whip parades, they tend to make the video a little bit longer. So be patient, take notes, and let's get started. So my first whip that I want to show you, that is a Christmas ornament. It is Little House Needleworks be Bringing Home the Tree. Some of these, I do not know the linen that I'm using because um, this was before I started keeping records of what I use. But this one I can tell is 32 count and it is a Belfast, um, or excuse me, it is a um, Belfast light mocha. And apparently you're supposed to call it mocha or mocha. I say mocha. Okay, so here is what I have so far. I have the little girl done, this little doggy, which again, looks like my, my brown um, Cavalier King Charles. Her name's Scout. And this is super cute. I am using all DMC on this, except on her dress. Um, I am using, let's see, what color for her dress? I am using Calico Kitty, uh, classic color works on her dress. Really sweet. So that is Little House Needleworks. Number two that I have, or the second whip that I have, is a Brenda Gervais Peppermint and Holly. And I am using a piece of scrap linen that I, um, I've got a off of one of those stash and loading sites. I received a, a bundle or like a, a grab bag of just random linen. And this was in that. And it, and I thought it was a 32 count, but now that I'm stitching on it, it might be a 36 count. Um, I haven't counted the holes to see, but I started this and all I have so far is the O and the Y and Joy. And I am using all of the called for floss and lots of colors in this one, but I just love this angel's dress and all the colors. And I do have this twine this blue uh, red and white twine i think this is going to be so pretty so but here are all the colors that i am using on this lots of pretty colors uh the red in this one i don't know i just kind of like comparing reds this one is lancaster red weeks dye works very pretty and then this used brick is also in here so that is peppermint and holly Brenda Gervais with thy needle and thread. Another one that I need to really pull back out and get busy on and finish it is from Blackbird Designs. This is in the Home for the Holidays booklet and this is Tis the Season and it is this piece here. And I am almost done with it. And I have to finish it this year because I put this year's date on it. So it needs to be finished. I am stitching this on 32 count Valor. Valor is a green, has a green tint to it. But look at that modeling on this. I'm using way too much linen for this. I didn't, I've wasted a lot of it. 
So hopefully I'll have some good pieces that I can make some things with. But I need to pick this back up. I am filling in the, the cardinal and I just have the words at the bottom and maybe a few snowflakes and then I'll be done with this one. Um, I just love this. I love this linen. I liked it so much that I bought it in the blue and in the pink, uh, but this, the Valor is the green and it is so pretty. And I love this book. If this is a book that you can still get, um, I've seen it in local needle workshops. I've seen it on one, two, three stitch home for the holidays. So many beautiful, beautiful designs in here. I really want to stitch this piece and I really want to stitch this down here. Such a good book. Um, but I am using all of the called for Bella Swa classic color work silks. And I think that's why I put this down is because the silks kept getting stuck on my fingers and it slides through my needle. It was really starting to, to frustrate me. So I had to put it down, I had to put it in timeout, but these colors are beautiful and they, they feel wonderful, but such a pretty, pretty pattern. So I will pick that one back up. I must finish it so I can have it framed in time for Christmas. So let's keep going. I think I told y'all a few weeks ago that I was having a Brenda Gervais nostalgia moment and I went on her website, which is called Country Stitch. Hmm, I'll link it below. I think it's called Country Stitches Online as her website. And I got this one. This is With Thy Needle and Thread, which is Brenda Gervais. This is Peace on Earth. And it's supposed to be a table runner, but I'm not stitching it as a table runner. Um, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with it, but it's not gonna be a table runner. And I have not gotten very far on this. I just started it. And that's, that's it. That's my little start. Uh, I think I have eight stitches in here. And I am stitching this on 32 count vintage country mocha. And I am using Cherry Cobbler for the red. It calls for a D the DMC um, color 3777, but I wanted it to be more over dyed. And it's all in one color, but I am going to stitch the words Peace on Earth in the red. And I'm gonna do the tree in English Ivy. And I don't know yet about the reindeer. Um, if I'm gonna stitch that in brown or if I'm gonna stitch it in red, but that is what I'm doing with this piece. And I just had this scrap piece of um, 32 count vintage country mocha. So that's why I picked that one. That is really my go-to linen lately. Um, it seems to, everything looks great on it, but this will be a quick stitch. It's mostly, mostly words and just the trees and the reindeer. Okay, now for some prairie schoolers. These whips are in no particular order at all. They are just stacked. I just took everything out of bags, laid them all on top, hoping that would help things go by a little bit faster, but they're in no order. Um, this is Prairie Schoolers Santas and Snowman booklet. This is a reprint, as you can see, it's real thin. Um, and I am stitching this one right now. And I'm using the called for DMC, but here's how far I've gotten on him. And I, you'll see through a lot of my Christmas stitching today that I um, have used a lot of 28 count even weave, Monaco even weave that I coffee tea dyed. And I used Priscilla and Chelsea's tutorial several years ago on how to coffee tea dye um, fabric. So this one is Santa's and Snowmen, and I've started him. So cute. Another uh, prairie schooler that I have been working on for many years, and I really hope I finish this one this year, is Christmas Eve. And I got this from Johnson City Cross Stitch and Crafts. They kitted it up for me. The called for fabric on this, I believe is what I'm using. And the called for fabric is Wichilt. Um, 
I'm trying to see if it has a color. Oh, here we go. Uh, Sage Joblin, 32 count Sage Joblin. So here's my progress. And I really like this piece. I think I put it down um, because, well, we, we all do that, right? We don't know why we put things down. It could be one little bitty thing or it could be one big thing. But I think I put this down because of the wording at the bottom and the snow. I think I got a little overwhelmed with that. It says, Noel, Merry Christmas, peace, love, joy. Such a pretty, and I love these patterns because they always have, I can't show you the back, but they always have um, little ornament complement or accompanied pieces to go with it. And here's this one up in the corner. So Christmas Eve, and I'm using all the called for DMC on that one. So my next one is another long going whip, Christmas whip. It's also on 28 count coffee tea dyed Monaco. And it is Lizzie Kate's Christmas rules. If you are not familiar with the Lizzie Kate's um, rules, house rules, they, she had it, they had it in Halloween and Christmas. So I bought the whole set, which is what all of these are. I have all of the buttons. I have all of, and the buttons are inside the pattern, but this is what it looks like when it's done. And you can get the topper, the pattern for the Christmas rules on their, their website. And then they have the pattern for what order you put these in. But here is where I am on that. And I started from the bottom and I'm working my way up. So let me show you what I have so far. And I am using uh, Priscilla's colors and um, some of the called for colors on this. And where you see if I'm missing a letter, it's probably because a button goes there. It's one of those cases where I probably didn't forget. You never know with me, but this is so much fun and so easy to stitch. I just put it down for, I again, something else, I guess, caught my attention. But I love the way the um, dye turned out, the coffee tea dye work turned out on this piece of fabric. So, Lizzie Kate's Christmas Rules. And it's all in one bag. This is a dot dot goose bag. I keep everything in here. And within each bag, well, I did have it all separated. Um, but each of the patterns, they use a lot of the same floss. So it's all in here. Some of these you'll recognize from my, my first ever whip parade. So, um, and some of them are new. So this is a Country Cottage Needleworks Silent Night. And I am using all the called for colors on this. And this is another one of those scrap pieces of linen that I had in my stash, but I do know that it's 32 count. So it's really pretty. Um, I really, I, I do enjoy this one. It's very, it, it, it really is calming. It's very soothing, but it's called Silent Night and it says Silent Night, Holy Night, all is calm, all is bright. So for my next one, another piece of, of my 28 count coffee tea dyed, even weave, Monaco, is another, oh, I'm missing the front. Here it is. Country Cottage Needleworks Ornamental Joy. And I am using the um, Weeks Dye Works on this, called for colors. And I just think this is so fun. I just love the little bows and the ornaments. Super cute. I'm getting pretty close to finishing this one. Well, no, I'm not. I still have the whole top and bottom to do. So, but it's a lot of fun. It's super easy. It's not a difficult stitch at all. I'm trying to keep all these organized. So, let's take a break from those and let's do... Um, number four, five, and six for this week. So,
So number four is from a viewer. And this is Cricket, Cricket Collection Christmas Letters. Number four. Number four. Number five. I, I purchased um, a PDF download from Little Boot Stitch this week. She has an Etsy store. And she messaged me and offered to give you all a free pattern. So she told me to go and pick one out of her shop and I did. And so the winner of this one will, I will email you the PDF that she sent, but this is it. It's called Christmas Socks. This is number five and it's courtesy of the little booch stitch. Super cute, that's number five. And number six is this scissor fob that I made. And it is an owl with some um, beautiful beads, crystal beads, and a tree charm at the bottom. So that is number six. All right, let's get back to our, our parade. <laughs> So the next one is one that I started to stitch along with my friend Kim Gavlik and um, Kay Reese. And we, I'm not sure how we're doing on this. I know I haven't stitched it in a while, but this is Country Cottage Needleworks Santa's Village. And I have all of them in this bag. And I have, if it came, if it required, um, a different floss than the others, I keep it in that individual bag. So that's what all of these are. You can go on their website and get the uh, order to put them in, the pattern. But here is my progress on that. When we were at the retreat a couple of weeks ago, um, someone was stitching on this and she was zooming or long. I believe it was Celia was doing it. I, I can't remember. I'll have to go back and check. Um, but it's so much fun and so pretty. I got this kitted up, the, the linen I got from Finishing Touch, and it's a 32 count um, light mocha, and the white really pops on it, and I, that's what I really wanted to make sure what happened. So if you decide to do anything with white, like a predominantly white floss, like the snowflakes, hold it up to your linen and make sure it's gonna stand out because you really want that white to show up. Sometimes the fabric can be too light. Um, but this is gonna be a, a long time progress because there are, I believe, 12 of these. Um, but it's so much fun and it's so cute when it's done. So that is Country Cottage Needleworks. Oops. Santa's Village. Okay, so I have in one bag several of um, Priscilla and Chelsea Stitching with the Housewives patterns. And I have more to add to it. Um, I, I have, and did you see her new release, one of the gingerbread cookie recipe um, stitched? And it's going to shops. I can't wait to get my hands on that one. Um, but I have several of her patterns in one bag. This one that I am currently working on is Holly Jolly. And it's a PDF download on her website. And this is how far I've gotten on that. And I am stitching this on Fabrics by Stephanie 28 count slate. So super pretty. And I'm using all the called for floss. Um, Priscilla uses pretty much all the same floss. So I have them all on one ring and um, have them ready to go for any of her designs. Okay. Now I'm on to some of my Prairie Schooler Santas. So what I do with these, I have all of the Prairie Schooler Santas and I do not stitch them in order. I just grab what I like or I'll have um, my son or daughter pick which one to start next. So this is the one I'm stitching right now. This is 2008. And these I usually stitch if I'm riding in the car 
or waiting in the car on someone just because it's easy for me to see. I have the same fabric for all of them. It is the called for 18 count Davo linen or fabric and I'm using all DMC floss, the called for floss on these. So this is 2008. And those are so much fun. I have about four of them I need to finish, like fully finish. And you'll see this probably next week. I had them stuffed and ready to, to close up, but I felt like I had too much of a border on the side. So I cut them and when I did, I got too close to the stitched piece. I, I, made, I made a huge mistake. So I had already cut, it was too late. Fortunately, I did not cut um, any of the stitching, but it's too close for me to now finish it as a pillow like it is. So I'm probably gonna have to do the border around it like I did with my um, JBW design um, tutorial that I showed y'all. So I'm probably gonna have to do that with those uh, three um, Prairie Schooler Santas. So they're gonna look different than the other Prairie Schooler Santas I have, but that's okay. Um, I have a new start. I couldn't wait to start this one. I showed you the pattern last week. This is Little House Needleworks, and I find that I stitch a lot of Little House Needleworks and Country Cottage Needleworks uh, for Christmas. So this one's called Jingle All the Way. It's the new release, and I just love all the colors in this. I love the, the, um, the quilt squares, the barn, all of it. So I started it and I am using 32 count um, light mocha, Belfast linen. So here's my start on that. Let's see, I don't wanna, but I started the roof, a little bit of the border. The roof I love, that's hickory sticks. I'm using all the called for floss. So here, here they are all together. I just love the light greens and the light reds and the browns, but so pretty. So that is my start on this piece. And I am keeping it in my joyful stitching bag that I think is perfect for these designs. So that is Jingle All The Way, Little Country Needleworks. Excuse me, Little House Needleworks. Okay. So now I'm gonna show you my update on A Quaker Christmas. So A Quaker Christmas is a stitch along that I am doing with Artie the Vintage Stitcher. This is from Bygone Stitches. They have A Quaker Christmas, this is number one. There's also A Quaker Christmas two. So if you are doing the stitch along or would like to do the stitch along, follow us on Instagram, join my Facebook page, um, show us your progress or just see what we're doing. But this, uh, if you do stitch this and would like to use the hashtag, it's hashtag Quaker Christmas SAL. So this is um, my progress on it. And I am down to the bottom. So this is the, the length of the, the design. I am stitching this on 36 count cream Edinburgh linen and I'm using the called for floss. It's Classic Color Works, um, Classic Color Works, Cupid, Yield Gold, and Bossom Fur. So that is, um, it's just so much fun. I'm using one strand over two, um, since this is 36 count. And that is a long process, uh, or a long project for me. I've decided it will not be finished at the end of November, and I am okay with that. So what I wanna show y'all next is these are not whips. These are, I'd like to get them started. These are all Christmas um, bags that are kind of either kitted up ready to go or they are almost ready to go. This one, oh, this is also another whip. This is Little House Needleworks Kringles. This came out last year and it has been in timeout since last year. Um, because the roof drove me crazy, but it is such a pretty design. I love this piece. 
Um, this is, again, here's the, here's a close-up of it. And I just got stuck right here because of the color changes in the roof. It just started making me go a little cross-eyed. So I will pick that back up eventually. Something will get me started back on it. I love seeing other people's finished and people are changing the name Kringles and putting either their family name on there or a toy store or so many different things, but I have not gotten that far yet. My next JBW design that I want to stitch is um, Christmas in the Round. And I have a green a round paddle a board from Stitch Etc. that I'm going to put this on. So I'm going to use Ribbon Red on this and I am going to stitch it on this 32 count white sajoured linen, um, antique white linen that I stitched my other pieces on from JBW Design. So that will be a quick stitch. I just love Judy's pieces. And thank you all so much who went over and told Judy, uh, gave you gave her your well wishes last week. Um, I have not heard from her since Friday, but she did she did say that she had that she appreciated the um, kind words and the good positive thoughts being sent her way. Um, so I can't wait to stitch that piece, Judy. Um, okay. So I have a Brenda Gervais pattern that it got stuck. Okay, I learned a lesson. I did not have my pattern in the plastic bag and I had it in my vinyl bag and I think it got hot in the car and it stuck to the vinyl. But this is Paper Snowflakes by Brenda Gervais. And I thought I had this kitted and ready to start. I have the linen, but I don't have the floss. So I need to get all the floss together. But this is, um, I'm stitching it on 36 count Mayflower Mocha when I do get started. And I think that's gonna be beautiful. So I am going to get this kitted up here pretty soon so I can get it started. Another piece I wanted to start this week, but I didn't because I didn't have the right color fabric. But I wanna start the Peppermint Lane from It's So Emma. This came out last year, and I believe you can now get it in a PDF download on Fat Quarter Shop's website. I'll link it below. Um, but I really want it on a white fabric. And the called for fabric is Antique White 16 Count Ada. And I had some um, Lori Holt Vintage Cloth and Shadow. Well, when I pulled it out, it's a little bit more gray than I wanted it to be. So I'm gonna go online this evening and order the white. I love the, the Lori Holt um, fabric, but I really want this in more of a white, so all those colors will just pop. So I have the thread pack, I have everything ready to go, I just don't have the right color linen or fabric for it. So I will get that soon. Um, okay. Another thing that you've seen me sh uh, have, I've pulled this out before, and that is my Leisure Arts booklet. I am gonna stitch more from, from this. So I have in this bag from Country, um, Creative Country Girl, I have all the, the Ada um, and the DMC floss ready to go. So that is super quick and easy to do those as well. And then I wanted to show y'all because I also keep in this bag all of my Little House Hometown Holiday Series. And I was watching Made, uh, Made by Michelle McGraw um, yesterday, I believe, and she went on to Fat Quarter Shop and purchased um, a plaid, uh, green plaid, and another coordinating green and red plaid to use as the backing for all of her um, Little House Country Needlework ornaments. I don't know if it was the hometown holidays that she was doing with those or if it was um, another one of the series, um, but I'm going to go on Fat Quarter Shop and see if I can find that fabric because I think they would be perfect for all of these, but I'm not going to go through all of these with you, but Little House Country Needleworks has a series called Hometown Holiday, and this is just a few of them. Here's a mercantile shop, the quilt shop, um, a bookstore, and oh, 
there is even a post office. If you can think of it, they made it. Um, here is a sweet shop, my favorite, the needlework shop. So I have almost all in the series. So I'm gonna work on those. They're all in this bag, all the floss. I have linen, everything ready to go. I just, uh, I need to get busy on those. So I just wanted to show you one more thing that I'm gonna work on. I have all of these um, Lori Holt Be In My Bonnet um, sew cards, uh, stitch cards, and these are the Christmas ones. So this is from Pack G, Set G. So here are the, here's the Christmas presents. Here's a little snow globe. The wreath, cross stitch um, wreath, hang on. And the candle. So these I think I'm gonna stitch up and make little ornaments for my sewing room. So that is definitely one I'm gonna kit up. These, and when I get the white linen for my peppermint lane, I think I'm gonna get enough to do these on it. And then I have, because I got some more fabric from um, Fat Quarter Shop today, I'll show you in my haul. But I want to stitch these hands-on designs uh, chalkboard ornaments. And as you can see, I already have a lot of fabric cut and ready to go. So I am going to hopefully get these started too. So they're not whips because I haven't started them yet, but they are on my wish list. I have so many of those. I hope I can get all of this stitched up. Probably won't happen, but it will happen soon enough. So that is all of my whips, my Christmas whips for this Christmas whip parade. Um, I probably have more that are hidden here and there, but those are the ones that are on my radar to at least touch at some point um, between now and the end of the year. Um, but I just tend to do a lot of my stitching and, and uh, during this time of the year. Um, I kind of hunker down. Um, it's a little cold outside. I get a little bit more done. Um, I turn on Christmas movies and that just keeps me busy in um, this time of the year. So I tend to get more stitched this time of the year. So let me show you my haul from this week and gifts that I received. So let me first start with my gifts. I showed you last week from Fat Quarter Shop the um, Be In My Bonnet Planner by Lori Holt. So if, if you did not see that last week, this is a beautiful planner. It is Be In My Bonnet 2022 Planner. And what I plan to do with this, um, this is just a wonderful planner that it's just your traditional planner that I'm going to use for a personal planner. Um, I'm going to use the cross, the Fat Quarter Shop cross stitch book to keep up with my my cross stitch projects I'm working on, and I'm still going to use my book of days as a a, a sticker book. But this is a wonderful personal planner, and you can see each page has its own color. So there's all of the Lori Holt vintage colors. You've got red and green and blue and just so many wonderful tabs. Um, it has the little bumblebee, the honeycomb down here at the bottom, the bee in each corner, so pretty. And this is spiral bound, hardcover, perfect, perfect for fitting in your bag. It, it will not get damaged, but it also comes in this beautiful box that I intend to use to keep some supplies in. Wonderful planner. Um, I will link it below if you'd missed out on that last week. Another gift that I received just last night from Fat Quarter Shop is this Floss and Store storage box. And this is new. It, they just released it this week. Um, this is a wonderful um, acrylic storage box for anything that you, you might need to store. Let me show you how it comes. It's beautifully packaged, um, very securely packaged too, in this wonderful box. But if you can see in that little tiny etched is the Fat Quarter Shops logo. But beautiful box, it pulls out. There are nine compartments inside. Um, you can stack, you can get multiple of these and stack them up, which is what I intend to do. But it's very sturdy. Um, it, each of the compartments um, can hold the floss bitties. They are floss bitties. Uh, you can also put your 
DMC or your Weeks Dye Works, any of your, your um, floss in here so you can see um, what you're looking for. You can even store your buttons. So many possibilities. And like I said, I wanna get a couple and stack them up and they're great drawers for just pulling right out. Um, the box measures 3.5 by 8 inches. So it's 3.5 inches by 8 inches by 12.25 inches. Inside each compartment is 2.375 inches by 2.625 inches by 3.687 inches. And all of that's on their website. I'll link it below. Beautiful compartment. Thank you so much, Fat Quarter Shop, for sending that our way. So, and I also received a generous gift from um, someone who makes floss tube, or uh, project bags. And her name is Angela, and her company is called Tiny House Stitchery. I saw her on Instagram, but she also has a Etsy shop that I'll link below. But she sent me some project bags and she sent me one to keep. I'm keeping the pink one and one to give away. So this is the one I'm giving away and it is beautiful, beautiful bag. It has the vinyl front with the cute Rick rack and this beautiful scissor, uh, uh, zipper pull with a pumpkin on it. So this is one of our giveaways for this week. We have two more giveaways for this week. So I'm gonna put those there. So thank you so much, Angela. I'll link her shop below if you wanna go and check her out. And then I, like I mentioned, we also have, uh, that I also purchased from Little Boot Stitch on Etsy. I purchased um, a pattern from her and I purchased candy. And it's a cute lollipop, PDF download. And she sent us the Christmas socks as a giveaway. So I will link her Etsy shop below as well. And I went on Fat Quarter Shop and I got some Night Sky. It's hand dyed 28 count from Fiber on, whim, fiber on a Whim. But this is 28 count um, cashew linen, linen, and the color is night sky. Sorry, I'm not wearing my glasses. But I thought this would be perfect for some of the stitching with the housewives um, fabric or stitching that I need. But I will link this one below too. It's called Fiber on a Whim Night Sky. This is 28 count. Very pretty. And then my last piece of haul, I thought this was adorable. This is from an Etsy store called Empty Nest Sewing Shop. And she had these cute garlands and she had candy cane um, and the Christmas trees. I think one other, I can't remember, garland. And I got the Christmas trees or the trees and I thought this would be so cute on my tree or somewhere in my sewing room for Christmas. So empty nest sewing shop. Oop. And isn't that just adorable? This cute little garland. It's made out of an old quilt and she just cut the shapes and then put them on the string for garland. Clever, clever, clever. So cute. Okay, so that's the end of all of my whips and my haul, and let's do our last two giveaways for this week. So number seven is the project bag from Angela from Tiny House Stitchery, number seven. Number eight, last one, is Prairie Schooler Santa's Revisited, and this is number eight. This has um, Santa's from 1997, 1998, and 2013. So those three Santas in one bag, one, one booklet. So here's how it works for the giveaways. Um, like my video, subscribe to my channel, answer the question, and list the number, one, two, three, four, et cetera, whatever number you would like to be entered to win, you are welcome to enter all of them. You're welcome to enter 
Um, if you have already won a prize, you're welcome to continue to enter because I use a random comment picker um, for the name. So I have nothing to do with it. I just enter the um, link from my uh, Lost Tube channel for that week and then I enter the number uh, one and the comment picker selects the, the, the name for me. So you can enter as many, you can enter every week if you want and you can enter if you've won before, that's fine. Um, I do ask that when you, if you win something, that you email me at thepropersticher at gmail.com. What's happened is I've had some people e uh, send me messages on Instagram and I get a lot of messages on Instagram and I have lost some of your um, information because I can't find it. I've gone through and looked through all of the comments. I've looked through all my messages and I cannot locate some of you. Um, there's not a way for me to search, um, like there's not a search bar in the messages on Instagram. So it makes it really difficult for me to find a specific message. So if you win a prize, email me. That is the best way for me to find you and send you your, your thing, your item that you won. So again, my email is thepropersticher at gmail.com. So now for this week's giveaways. This week, I want you to answer the question, and again, that's the other thing. So, you tell me what number you would like to be entered to win, like the video, subscribe, but you answer the question. And so, this week, um, I would like to know, what is your favorite Christmas or holiday movie that you like to watch? If it's something you watch every year, or if it's something that's just your favorite and you, you, know, you just haven't, haven't watched it in a while, what is your favorite Christmas or holiday movie? So here are the winners from last week. So we've already gone through one through eight for this week. So here are the winners from last week. All right, so number one was the gift bag or the project bag from Joyful Stitching. And this is the Christmas one. And number one goes to Yoke Boonstra. J-O-K-E, Boonstra, B-O-O-N-S-T-R-A. And that is my friend Yoke. And the random comment picker selected her for this prize. So that's number one. Number two is at the pink scissor fob with the little pink pig. This goes to Ruth Cole, C-O-L-E, Ruth Cole. Number three is the pumpkin scissor fob. This goes to Michigan Gal, G-A-L, 007. So Michigan Gal 007. The third um, scissor fob, the blue one, this goes to Lynn McGill, Lynn M-A-Gill, G-I-L-L. -L. Number five was the Plum Street Sampler, A Shepherd's Story, this goes to Dick or Sherry Maynard, and that's M-A-Y-N-A-R-D, Dick or Sherry, and Sherry is C-H-E-R-I-E. -E. Number six was the other project bag from Creative Carol. This is, goes to Holly Yingling, Holly Yingling. Number seven was Summer House Stitch Works, Harriet's Valentine. This goes to Erin Stratton, S-T-R-A-T-T-O-N, Erin, E-R-I-N. Number eight was Country Cottage Needleworks Ornament. This is Christmas Birdhouse. This goes to S. Susan 3, S. Susan 3. Number nine, it goes to Patty Altier, A-L-T-I-E-R. And the last item is the Christmas Portrait Leisure Art Book. This goes to V Sews. So it's V S E W S. So everyone, if you could please email me at the proper stitcher at gmail.com, email me your name, your address, and the item you won, and I will get these out in the mail to you as soon as possible. Um, and other than that, I think that's everything for this week. I hope you have a wonderful Halloween. I know it's funny that I did a Christmas whip parade for the week of Halloween, but I am 
shifting gears and focusing on Christmas starting November 1st. I will take down all of my Halloween decorations and start pulling out Christmas. So enjoy your weekend, have fun, stay safe, and enjoy some fall, fall weather and stitching. So thanks for watching. See you next Thursday.